Steve, there's just it's just a, a real honor to get to spend time with you and to talk you talk with you about a subject that we're both passionate about and working to advocate for people. Um, I think it's really important that men get this and men understand that uh, you know a little bit of prevention goes a long way. Um, it, was there a can, can you share with me and I was recently diagnosed in 2008 with a heart condition and so I know what it's like to uh, the fear that comes across and I know that the fear between baseball and the fear of life and death are two completely different things. What's it like when you sit there with the doctor and um, and he gives you the news that you have prostate cancer? Well, I think it uh, it actually starts when you've done your uh, your preliminary discussions with him. We talked about the biopsy, um, and a couple of days later, I was watching my uh, my youngest son, Sean Fitzpatrick Garvey, practice football at a at a field. I was sitting on a bench, and I was kind of by myself. And the phone rang, and it was Doctor Litwin, and um, and you know. Great doctors understand three things, and that's uh, the the ability of the, of the head, the heart, and the hands to work in unison. So he understood that he needed to be straightforward. Uh, he said, "Steve, uh, you do have cancer. These are your Gleason scores. Uh, I feel very confident that we can attack it and uh, and rid your body of it." And he said, "I need you to come in as soon as possible, so we we don't uh, delay." And let's let's go after this like he used to go after that Nolan Ryan fastball, <laughs> and I laughed. Uh, but he was very he was very straightforward, but very understanding and passionate. He said, uh, you know, let's talk to Candace together about this. I did. He said, uh, I would suggest you talk to your children as soon as possible so they know we did that too. Uh, so it, it as as always been said, it takes a village, you know, to be able to teach children or or to conquer problems. In this case, it. It's been a village. It's been a team. Uh, it's ongoing. Uh, life is not a sprint. It's a marathon. So we need to do this together. And that's why, you know, like I said before, men come up to me every day, wherever it may be, the airports, uh, New York, uh, Cabo San Lucas, walking on the beach. <laughs> when, you know, was there 24 hours to make a speech? I mean, that's, uh, that's rough. Uh, Dodger Stadium, uh, wherever it may be. So you know, I'm always available to sit down and, 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 and talk to men and talk to women who are going through it too. Well, you know, when you're married to the, the love of your life or your, or, you, or your wonderful daughters or whomever is close to you, significant other, you need to communicate. There was a big cancer dinner here in, in uh, the Coachella Valley and I was asked to speak. And I asked all the men after a couple minutes to raise their hand if they were going to be proactive in dealing with their, their PSA. And everybody rose their hand. And then I said, now look at that woman next to you. Take her hand and look her in the eye and nod your head if you are actually going to do this and be proactive and, and, and do it for her. If you don't want to do it for yourself, do it for her. And uh, I saw these heads turn and the tears came down. And, <laughs> and uh, a couple of guys came up afterwards and said, it's going to cost me a shopping trip now. You know that, don't you? <laughs> I said, what's, what's worth it? Yeah, your life or a shopping trip? They said, we're going on El Paseo tomorrow. <laughs> but, you know, you, you also have to be a little light about this, too. I mean, uh, yes, it's a challenge, but doing it together, picking the right doctor, uh, the right department, the right hospital, uh, like I have at UCLA, feeling confident and then uh, and having faith, having faith in God and, and putting you know this into his hands and asking him to... Uh, you know, those, those footprint in the sands uh, as story we hear about sometimes, you know, well, where were my footprints, God? And he said, that's when I picked you up and carried you. Well, that's what happens. Some prostate cancers are high risk, aggressive, and more likely to spread. Others are low risk, least likely to have bad outcomes. The biopsy says cancer, but current diagnostic tools provide limited information about how aggressive a man's individual disease is. So most men decide to treat prostate cancer immediately. Once treated, many men experience serious long-term side effects, like incontinence and sexual impotence. Immediate treatment isn't always needed, but right now a man can't be sure if his cancer is the kind that is likely to require treatment or if he's okay to wait for now. What if there was a test that could determine how aggressive prostate cancer is? Genomic Health is developing a new test to do just that. By reviewing the underlying biology of the tumor and using genes from multiple biologic pathways, 
The test can predict the aggressiveness of prostate cancer when diagnosed, allowing a man to make a more informed treatment decision with confidence, taking care of himself with more information and greater peace of mind.